Welcome to Ebenezer Design on Demand. This is the main page once you log in that you will be able to make your selections on the of items or templates that you would like to design or create. You can see here we've got fact sheets loaded, flyers, postcards, brochures, box slips, signs, and table tents. For a demonstration today, we will use a flyer. Very simply, just go down, click on the item. You will have some credentials that you do need to fill out. I'm just gonna use uh, basic information for now, being this is only a test. Click Customize when you're ready, and the interface will, will open. Depending on your internet connection, it could take a little bit of time. <clears throat> this is what they basically look like most of the time. Um, this is the interface. You will have categories. I will go through all this information with you. Starting with the tools. At the top, we have a pointer tool. This pointer tool is used when you have to select on a box, move a box, or if you actually just want to change your, a photograph inside a, a picture box, or if you want to delete something. You do need to be on this pointer tool. Next tool is a text tool. It's for editing text. If you're gonna click on a text box, you do need to be on this to highlight text. This next hand tool is basically for moving a box, your pages up and down, or if the pointer is selected, you can move a box around the page. This zoom tool here, is basically you would click in a specific area and it will blow up the area and bring it closer to you. Over here you also do have some other zoom tools. This one here is the fit to page tool and if you do hover over the tools it gives you a rough description of what they do. This one you click on it and brings up the whole view of the page. Here you have a plus and minus, it just centers. Or you can pick a specific size you want something to be. The next tool <clears throat> here is an undo and redo tool, right here. What it does is it lets you, if you've designed something, or if you've done something you decided you don't want, you can go up here and you hit undo. And you can hit undo as many times as you want, or if you've done something many times, you will be able to click on an arrow here, and it'll, it'll take you to the step that you want to delete. But it will delete everything to that step forward. So, or you can just one click at a time, go all the way back to the beginning. Next tool we have is a copy and paste tool. It's literally what it says. You click copy and paste. Now you've got two items. So, and then you could take, again, this hand tool. You can move it around once it's clicked on. Or you can delete it. We're going to delete it for demonstration. The next item you have here is a create frames box. It'll give you certain items that you can add a text box, an image box, rectangles, lines, so, so on. And, it, you know, it basically will let you add something extra. And, of course, it always does go up in the left corner, so you will have to move it to wherever you want it to be. We will delete this for now. The next item you have up here is a soft proof. So if you click this button, this little PDF icon right here, I'm not going to do it, but if you click on it, 
It will open up a PDF on your computer, high resolution, um, or it may download it depending on how your computer is configured, your, your browser. Um, mine go to the desktop. And they are high resolution. Um, so I can, sh and I will show you how to get a low resolution one to email if you would like. <clears throat> once you're done, once you've kind of gone through all these and tested and played with them a little bit, you'll have another little row here. This toggle view mode, you click on it and it'll give you frames around all the items that you have to work with that are, you know, that you can change or do whatever you want. Um, I don't use this very often myself because it just clutters up the document. But uh, if you want, it does show you rulers. When you click on a text box, if you want to see something that's got a ruler, this will give you rulers. So you can kind of have a general idea of, you know, for spacing and things like that. If you uncheck this, rulers and guides are gone. Most of these things are pretty standard, so you may not need it. It probably can be more confusing to have it showing, and plus it clutters up the screen. Another thing you have here is a view tool. If you are working on a four page document, you can actually page through all the documents right there, and it'll open it up and show it in spreads. On this side over here, we have these tabs set up. As you can see here, <clears throat> it's pretty standard. Obviously, there's a logo pull down. You could select your logo that you want. And down here is a list of what colors go with that logo. So it, and you would just select the color in here. Or if you, whatever color you want it to be. And it will change everything that's supposed to be in the color that is selected. The next tool we have is the text settings tool. And what that is, is when you highlight your text, you're going to have these little different options. Basically, uh, they're just like uh, Windows, or Word, or anything like that, InDesign, whatever you use on a day-to-day -day base. Um, these are also repeated up here as well. So you can change your fonts right here. And we only have the ones listed that the documents include. Oops, excuse me. You can change font size. You can check spelling. Literally just click on it and it'll it'll check it for you. So you can change the color here. You just double click on the color. Now obviously that's too bright, so we will go ahead and hit undo and go back to the black that it was. Then of course you can center left and right justify. Then over here we have a character adjustment that they have in a lot of other programs. You can kind of work with this and see, you can kind of see what it's doing. <clears throat> you may or may not need these, but they are there just in case you do. You can kind of see what they're doing. And then again, you can change colors, size, and fonts there and position as it, as it shows. Okay, the next thing we have in here also is if you want to, if you decide you want to tab something with a bullet, you can click here, increase indent, or it's up here as well, and decrease, and decrease is there as well. So that will make a bullet, a bulleted tab. You can do this as many times as you want to. It will keep moving over, and you can undo it as many times as you want. As you can see in here, these coordinates here change. You can play with them and get them to a certain specific way you want them to be by simply just changing the numbers in here. And that you kind of have to mess with it however you want it to be to get it to look, to look the way you want. 
And then again, we're gonna, we would go up here, hit undo if we don't like any of this, and it'll just bring everything back. Then there's this tab here. It's a page tool for adding and subtracting pages. You would literally just hit the plus sign and it'll put a blank page in there. The page is blank. It does not duplicate the current page. So if you do want to back on one of these single-sided documents, you will have to go up here and create your add your own text box and image box. We will minus that page. The next uh, tab you have here is a guide tab. This one you need the toggles on to be able to use it. It basically just puts in lines so you can kind of uh, set some guidelines for yourself if you want to change things to have so you can see things and line things up correctly. You can kind of see what I did. There is no vertical lines you have to use for vertical. You have to take the line tool. And to do that, you would just take that and it automatically knocks it, it'll knock it down to a, it's actually cooked on a snap to at this point. And it'll make it straight. You can move this to wherever you want it to be to line something up. And then when you're done lining things up, just simply delete it. That's all that is. So to shut all that off, you would just hit the toggle view and then you again get a clean view. Photos. To change a photo, make sure you're on the pointer tool. Very simply click on the photo. You can clear the image of the current one, but then in some cases you may not be able to see the border. So I just leave the photo in there myself. I have everything set in manual. Um, I do that for a reason so you can custom position it yourself. Hit assign image and your photo library will open up. These are already preset where they were given to us to load by uh, Fairview. If you have your own file, you want to load that, you click browse for local file right there and it will let you select an item on your desktop. I don't have one but you would select one on your desktop or wherever you have it and hit cancel. Once you find the photo you want, and what I do kind of recommend is look at the size of the box, roughly try to pick out a photo that's something similar shaped. We'll just grab this one. Once you find it, double click it and it will pop in and you can see it doesn't fit very well. Click on this crop tool right up here and then you can move it around and you can kind of see it moving on your document. So we would leave that just the way it is and then you hit this close button. Once you're done with that, you just, you can actually go back in. If you decide, okay, I don't like this photo, click back on it, hit assign image again, or you can actually just go back to undo and you will see it'll go back to the original photo. And then if you need to change something, again, in this particular one, you would take the cropping tool right here, click on it, and then the, again, that'll let you move this photo around as well. You can hit X or close. You have these two little items here. This is to color the background of a box, but with a photo, you don't need to color the background. Here is a border. You can actually edit the bo a border and add a frame on it, but with your templates the way they are, they're not, they do not have borders currently. You can add one if you want. Some of the items on here are actually gonna be locked down. Um, you're not supposed, they're meant to not be changed. This little logo and this one should not be changed. So when these logos in here are selected and variable logos, they will change, but the Ebenezer logo will stay. Okay, so once you are actually done with this document and you want to save it, you just simply go ahead and hit Save Document. Hit OK. Now the document has been saved to your Save Documents folder. 
And that is either you can go into my account down here, or I just tell people, click on your email address up here, and that will bring you to the document. It's always at the top. <clears throat> Once you see the document in there, you know you've saved it, and you decide, well, I'm gonna do, I wanna do something with it, or I wanna delete it. You can either click delete, edit, or copy. Copying the document, what that does is it allows you to copy the document exactly as it is and duplicate it because it'll it'll prompt you to make a new set of credentials. So that'll it'll duplicate the form and then that way the form's not named the same way twice. You can name it a different way the second time for the version you're going to create. In this case, we're just going to edit one. We're going to go back and edit the job. And it skipped all the credentials because we already had them in there. <clears throat> this time we are going to order the job. Okay, so we've decided, well, we're not going to make any change. We'll make one little change on here. Let's add, insert a special character. Right here is a special characters uh, folder. You can just click on anything you want. You can kind of sort through them and see what's in there. You can just add, basically double click it and you can see it added it. We'll take that out for now. We don't need that. So now we decided we're going to go ahead and place the order. You can hit save document, but if you add to cart, it's also going to save it as well. So we're going to hit add to cart. Okay, and here's all the credentials you put in the file name. And when you do order these, these will transfer to the order. So you don't have to type them again. In here you will have a cost center that you will need to order or to add. I don't know uh, what characters it's going to be, how many you need, I'm not sure. You have special characters or special instructions you can type down here. And you can also update your quantity. Or you can click this button here to hit remove. It'll cancel your order. And once you change this, just hit update shopping cart. Now it updated it. And then now when you're in here, you think, okay, I forgot. I do want to actually make one more edit. You can go right here and click on this edit button. Or you think, well, I just would like to see a PDF to email to somebody before I actually do place the order. You click on PDF preview right here, and that will give you a low res emailable PDF. In this case, we're gonna place the order. We're gonna hit checkout. And when you sign up, it's gonna ask you for a your, your basic uh, main address where you're located. That will be your first billing address or delivery address, whatever you want to call it. If you need to add a new one for this, say you're going to order some and you want them to ship to a different location, all you do is click on this and add new address. And the new addresses that you add always will stay in the file so you won't have to type it every single time. So we're done. And it asks you again, you need to continue on. And then now it's verifying that you'd selected the right address. Hit continue one more time. Now here's all your, here's your whole order. Everything that you've got. It's your billing address, shipping address, shipping method, and by the way, local truck delivery is the standard default. If it is just a PDF or electronic file, it, we automatically will just email you that, but it will still say this. You will get a confirmation that an order has been placed in your name, and you will get an, or, uh, an email um, confirming all the steps once it's printed, once it's shipped. You will get an email for that. And again, down here, it gives you a little preview of what, it, what, every, what you did order. Hit confirm. And here, in your order has been ordered. It gives you an order confirmation number. Good idea to write that number down for if you have to call and inquire about something. So you are done.
Now you've decided, okay, I want to go back and I want to look at that order. You would click on your name here, your email address at the top, or you can click on orders. It's going to open up all your orders. Here's the last order I just did. Click on this and it gives you all the details. And you can hit reorder if you want to order more. But we're not going to do that. So we'll click back on this. You can click in here to look at your jobs. If you want to reorder something again else or edit another job, you can click on it right here, edit document, copy document, delete document. Or again here you can check in your orders. Here's your customer information, the, your addresses that we talked about where you can add another address or delete it. And you can go in here and change a password if you want to. That basically is all there is with uh, starting a job, creating it, and finishing it. If you ever do need to go in to order, a, to search another job through another customer, or a, if you have a SmartWorks number of a job, all you need to do is click on, at the top, Previous Order Search. Right here, all you do is type in anything. I'm just going to use the word test because I that's really the only thing I know that I would find right away because I don't know your SmartWorks numbers. This pulled up all my recent test files. These are files that are going to pick up files from anybody who's created them. If you have a SmartWorks number, it'll find it no matter who created it. If you want to put someone's name in there, it will actually search out their jobs. If, if they have something in here, there is no, she has not used anything on this site. So there is actually nothing in there at this time. So that's why I'm going to use this. And it just pulls up the jobs that we've done on this site. That is basically all you will need to do to use this site. If you have any questions, contact me um, at uh, Custom Graphics or you can contact Amy Knutson at um, Fairview Health Creative Services, and she can uh, answer questions. I can answer questions. Um, the, our contact information can be emailed to you if you need it. So I just want to thank you for looking at this, and feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thank you.